it's a good time to be a gamer. <laughs> well, if you overlook the current massive cluster that is the current GPU situation and shortages anyway. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, a lot of stuff is getting cheaper and more accessible and by that of course I mean peripherals because today I am taking a look at a new gaming mouse from Mashinike, the M830 Devilfish and right off the bat, on paper, it gets a lot of things right. But there are a few things that honestly, I really do wish that it got right too. So let me get into all of that and more with my review of the uh, Mashinike M830 Devilfish. Right, so the mouse costs just about 130 ringgit here in Malaysia on Lazada, which is about 31 US dollars, clearly making it one of the cheaper wireless gaming mice out there. That's just about the only thing that Mashinite cheaped out on, however, as this mouse is packed with a Pixar 3335 low power sensor, KO Blue 30 million click micro switches, Mark Speed Wireless, which has a maximum polling rate of 1000 Hz, a 1000 mAh battery, and weighs in at about 90 grams, 92 if you're considering with the receiver. The Devilfish has a gunmetal like finish on its plastic body, and you can clearly see where it gets its name from, as a Devilfish is a type of ray, and indeed, the uh, skirts of the mouse reflect this. If you didn't notice it already, the trim of the skirt also has RGB lighting, though I find it just a little bit too small and subtle to really matter. You can swap the backplate of the mouse for a more solid one if you don't like uh, the honeycomb design or, you know, are tripophobic, and the inside uh, of the back is where you'll find the USB receiver of the mouse. And you know what? Every wireless mouse should do this as it is really easy to misplace a dongle this small. Strangely enough, you can even pop off the back of the mouse here to review the 1000 mAh battery, but it's not exactly user replaceable as far as I can tell, so that's kind of weird. Moving along down the bottom, we find that the mouse has quite an intricate looking design down here, which is kind of cool, I guess, together with three mouse feet, a button to switch the DPI levels, a power on switch, which also allows you to run the mouse without RGB lighting and the sensor of the mouse. The Pixar 3335 that is used here is a high performance, low power sensor designed for wireless mice like this and uh, goes up to 16,000 dpi, has a 4,000 inch per second tracking speed and supports up to 40 grams of acceleration. Oh, and uh, of course, don't forget to remove the plastic protection layer of the feet of the mouse as I've made that mistake before. If you don't want to use this mouse wirelessly, you don't have to because the USB-C port at the front of the mouse isn't just for charging as you can use the provided cable to use this mouse wired. The cable is pretty nice as well as it is a really nice and light paracord braided cable and comes in at about 1.6 meters in length which should be more than long enough for most people. The center scroll wheel is lit with the color code for the DPI levels, is nice to use and has distinct scroll steps and the kale blue micro switches for the left and right clicks have quite a heavy actuation force, at least more than I'm used to and are quite audibly clicky. I'm not quite a fan of the shape of the side buttons, however, as I find that they are too recessed for my liking, which I think brings us into the ergonomics section of the mouse. It is technically ambidextrous, although these side buttons are only on the left, and with my claw grip, I found that the profile of the mouse um, was actually too long with the back of the mouse constantly hitting the back of my hand. Indeed, it is longer than the Basilisk X that I'm used to, but I also don't like how the skirt of the mouse for me was more aesthetic than functional. It is too far back into the uh, mouse to provide any support for the thumb or ring or pinky finger, and more often than not, I find my thumb and pinky rubbing into the sharp corners of the skirt, which makes it a bit uncomfortable. 
To me, this is probably something that they could have fixed by making the, you know, devil fish part of their mouth a bit longer and, you know, maybe a bit more pronounced and by also shortening the profile of the mouse a little. So it's really quite a shame because as we move on into the software and performance of the mouse, I was honestly really impressed by it. Okay, so not so much the uh, software download part because you know, like the Machinite devices that I've reviewed before, there was no link whatsoever in the manuals and so I had to search for it on the Machinite website using Google Translate but uh, once I got the software up and running, it was honestly pretty good. The UI was pretty easy and intuitive to understand, custom buttons and macros were honestly really easy and the RGB settings were, you know, quite robust. I however didn't like that there wasn't any way to check the battery level of the mouse here and the pointer acceleration is also enabled by default. So remember to head into the parameters tab and disable that if you value your accuracy. The settings are also saved onto the onboard memory of the mouse which is a really nice touch as you can just plug your mouse into another machine and it'll retain your buttons, your macros and your DPI settings. Before we move on onto the performance of the mouse, regardless as to whether you use this mouse wired or wirelessly, it can run up to 1000Hz, though I did notice that wirelessly it wasn't able to pick up some of my uh, really microscopic movements that I do sometimes, and I mean, you know, movements by uh, 1 to 2 millimeters. so maybe that's just me, but that's something to keep in mind. Moving on to real world usage, while gaming, I was honestly quite impressed with the performance of the mouse. Not only did I not get any, you know, uh, wireless signal cutting out for me, and perhaps thanks to the PixArt 3335 sensor on board, I had no problems performing at my usual best when gaming, so much so that I actually kinda preferred this mouse to my daily driver um, Razer Basilisk X, which at times, right now, um, the left and right switches have begun to act up. Once I got used to the shape of the mouse, its performance honestly did not disappoint. And yeah, I really didn't feel my gaming performance was hindered at all. During this period, I only managed to get a maximum of 40 hours out of the mouse, uh, with the mouse running at the 1000Hz and no RGB on. And I mean, it's not necessarily the best, it's quite alright. And when the mouse is low on battery, the middle mouse button will start flashing red to let you know that it's time to charge. It is, however, unfortunate that there is nothing on the software for the mouse um, that shows and notifies you of the battery level. On that note of charging, if you use the mouse wired with a USB-C cable like the one provided, the battery indicator on the side of the mouse will light up to let you know that it is charging. I think it's time to draw my conclusions on the M830 Devilfish. Look, honestly said, on a pure performance perspective, I really love this mouse. It really performs on par with the best out there and uh, I have no problems performing my best on this mouse. But is this mouse perfect? At least for me, I don't think so. The ergonomics of the mouse was really the biggest letdown for me. I really would have loved to see a shape that cradled my hands just a little bit more with a you know higher bump, shorter back and maybe the skirting uh, that actually supports my fingers. I would have really loved to see a battery indicator in the software and I would have also loved to have a little bit more pronounced side buttons, but that's just about my only complaints about it. Trust me when I say that I'm not exaggerating or paid off to say that the performance of this mouse is capable of going toe to toe with the best out there, because to me, it really is. It does well in areas where it really counts like uh, latency, performance and reliability, and honestly, if you look past its flaws, I can seriously recommend the Machinite M830 Devilfish, especially at its asking price of just 31 US dollars. As usual, I really do love looking at stuff from less common brands and yeah, that's pretty much it uh, from this video. If you'd like to get one for yourself, then I'd leave a, well, 
I'll leave a link for it down in the uh, description below. If you found this review helpful, then what really helps my channel is giving it a like and leaving a comment down below on what you think about this video or this mouse. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. <laughs> don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified for any of my future videos. My name is Yang, the tech rodent, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I really do feel like if you look beyond the big names, you can really find a lot of hidden gems. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Yeah, this isn't a sliding chair, is it?